Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to our webinar where Sojourn Solutions and Magnus Consulting are joining together to talk about marketing misalignment. I'm Phil Boyden from Sojourn Solutions. I've been working in market automation and the wider customer experience stack for around 12 years now, and I'll be acting as your host for today. As we go through the webinar, feel free to pop any questions into the Q&A channel and we will try and get to them at the end. If we run out of time, we promise to respond via email later. We'll also send a follow-up email out after this with a link to the recording and a link to the guide we have produced so you can look into this topic further. So let's get started. Businesses need alignment across their planning, their processes and the underlying platforms if they want to carry through their overall strategy and achieve their goals. Today, we're going to ask our panellists to take a dive into what this really means. We'll take an initial look at some statistics. And then we'll ask our panelists to tell us about how misalignment can impact a business and the symptoms we could be looking for to catch this early. We'll then look at the ideal state and some ways we can go about solving misalignment along with the benefits that that would bring. We can then ask for some real world examples because I always like to get things put into perspective. And to finish up, we'll give you a few key takeaways to be working with in your own business. So we, before we meet our panelists, let's take a look at those statistics that I mentioned. With between 57% and 70% of the buyer journey often complete in B2B before the first sales conversation, it's really important the messaging we get out there is working for the business and aligns the overall KPIs, goals and strategy for the company. Although companies can often feel their overall strategy is aligned across the business, only 23% feel they can really talk to the priorities from those strategies. Only 30% of sales professionals feel their marketing and sales teams are aligned, which inherently gives us a mismatch between the leads sales need to work and those being passed across from marketing. This leads to 74% of CMOs not feeling they can fully impact the business. An additional statistic here is that most companies are only using 33% of the capabilities in their marketing tech stack. This in itself puts a large dent in the return on investment before we've even started to try and drive revenue. And overall, this leads us to the fact that only 15% of companies are aligned enough across the business to actually drive profitable revenue growth, customer loyalty, and employee engagement. To look deeper into this today, we have Danny Philemon from Magnus Consulting and Kristin Connell of Sojourn Solutions. Danny, can I ask you to introduce yourself first? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Danny. I'm a senior strategist at Magnus Consulting. We're a growth consultancy who help clients uh, achieve better long term growth. We recognize that marketing sits at the heart of growth um, and we help clients to realign marketing with their commercial objectives, as well as the entire customer journey. Um, I've worked across a breadth of sectors, uh, but generally specialize in tech, SaaS and telco. I know that's quite gen general, uh, but global brands, including Nokia, Vodafone, Iron Mountain, General Motors and BT. Great, thanks. And Kristen? Yeah, thanks, Phil. Um, again, Kristen Connell. I'm a global head of partnerships and marketing and senior strategist at Sojourn Solutions. Uh, Sojourns is a global marketing operations consultancy. Um, we essentially exist to help our customers establish, prove, maintain, and grow the value of marketing in the wider organization. Uh, I've been with Sojourns since 2016 and in this space since 2007 as both a consultant and a marketer. Um, I've had the opportunity to partner with industry leaders uh, like Oracle, Adobe, and Salesforce, as well as some amazing customers like Thomson Reuters, uh, NASDAQ, Quest Diagnostics, Siemens, and Fifth Third Bank. And I'm really looking forward to our conversation today. Great, well, thanks both. Uh, so we're discussing marketing misalignment today, but what can we be looking for here? How can we tell if there is misalignment? Danny, I'll come to you first, as I'm assuming the strategy precedes the operational side of things. So what symptoms can we be looking out for and what impacts might we see on the business as a whole? Yeah, thanks, Phil. Um, I think it's worth also taking a step back to understand that when our clients generally come to us looking to improve marketing alignment or if they um, think there may be an issue with alignment in the business, this can come from a marketing leader, it can come from a sales leader, uh, sometimes from a CGO, CRO, but also sometimes a CEO. Um, the pains that they're experiencing in their roles and across the business is usually performance related. So it might be lower pipeline than is needed. It might be lower marketing influence pipe, or it could be something like um, a low number of net new logos or potential issues with retention. 
Um, now it's worth saying that that misalignment might be just within marketing, but typically what we see is actually there's bigger misalignment both within teams, maybe within marketing, but potentially with other uh, functions across the business as well. And that is generally kind of marketing sales and product. Um, we worked recently with a um, customer where we did a gap analysis and actually one of the key misalignments in their business was with the product teams and the marketing teams and the product teams and the sales teams. So even if marketing was the initial conversation starter, it was actually through kind of that analysis that the key uh, potential issue for the business was sitting over in product. And actually there was this big churn issue coming on the horizon. Um, so it's worth just keeping it kind of a broader mindset as well. I know that we're here to talk about marketing though. So um, from a marketing misalignment point of view, the typical things that you may see um, is marketing may be quite reactive if there's a, an alignment issue, um, reactive to the needs of the business. It might be quite focused on short-term acquisition. So by that kind of a, a lead gen machine, um, if there isn't a long-term marketing strategy in place, then potentially marketing might be seen more as a support function to the business. Um, so therefore there may be low reputation uh, of marketing and actually a perception that marketing has kind of low strategic value within the business as well. At a more macro level um, within the marketing teams, uh, if there's misalignment, then potentially there may be low empowerment within the teams. Um, so where people aren't clear either on their roles or the responsibilities that they have within their roles, that could lead to a low empowerment as well as high team churn. So a lot of turnover. Um, and also if people aren't clear on actually what are the measures of success. So within their individual roles, what are the KPIs that they're working towards? If, that, if those aren't clear, then that obviously scales up to actually how does marketing as a function define success and how can it be speaking about its own success within the business as well? Um, so yes, a lot of measures there, but you may be experiencing a number of those if alignment is an issue. Thanks, I think Kristen, from an operational side, what do we, do we see there? Yeah, I, I love that response. Um, operationally, we see um, you know similar performance uh, related symptoms of marketing misalignment. Um, you know, just a real uh, one that stands out would be um, you know, not enough leads or not enough of the right leads or not enough of the right leads in a timely manner. Uh, another one that we see consistently in terms of a symptom here um, kind of sounds like MarTech isn't working right uh, or it's the wrong MarTech for what's needed or we need new or more MarTech to hit our goals. And some of that might sound familiar to some of you. Um, in terms of the operational impacts of the misalignment with MarTech, um, especially, well, specifically, um, in some cases it is the MarTech. Um, that's just plain simple. Um, I've seen both as a consultant and, in a mar and as a marketer where the MarTech just never delivered on what was promised. Um, but on the flip side of that, I've also seen where the MarTech, um, you know, in fact, delivered exactly what was promised, and it just wasn't quite in alignment with the business. And then, so you're looking at, you go back and, and as Danny mentioned, look at your people or perhaps your process there versus it being a MarTech issue. Um, just a quick note on, on um, the symptom of MarTech in and around alignment. It's such a significant investment um, that marketing organizations and organizations at large are making in marketing technology. I think it's really critical that the adoption and performance is of MarTech as a priority. Um, I'm working with a customer now to customize our MarTech um, adoption scorecard to include use case fit. So really focusing in on the alignment um, of MarTech with marketing and business priorities, as well as how their users and the integration and architectural fits come into play and the vendor strategic fit as well. They have a massive MarTech um, stack. When I say massive, I'm talking 170 plus um, to date. <laughs> um, but it's just a much more ob uh, ob objective, quantifiable way to measure MarTech's impact aligned to what's important to the business and really helps us to avoid or mitigate the it's the MarTech's fault conversations when you're looking into misalignment. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Faith. The, um, so we've got a number of things we can be looking out for, by the, by the way from you both talking there uh, lots of symptoms we can spot and um, issues that we'll see across the business um i've all i've also seen companies where they've kind of kind of sort of biannual basis they're tearing out the tech and pointing the fingers there and you, you have to ask the question is there you know, there's clearly something deeply going on don't you so with that in mind um 
how can we head towards ideal state? So what are the benefits of getting there? Uh, Danny, again, strategy-wise, not ladies' first day, I'm afraid. Danny, can I come, come to you for the strategy piece first? Yeah, sure. Um, and I think what you said there, Phil, was really interesting in terms of kind of understanding what's happening and then rather than just almost ripping out or actually is the symptom a symptom of something larger, what we'll generally do to, to get to an ideal state is start by understanding what the current role of marketing is. Um, and then defining where marketing can go. So what the new role of marketing is and actually with the shift from A to B from where you are to where you'd like to be um, is obviously different for every business. Um, but generally, um, it's always looking to increase the impact of marketing. So that's the impact of marketing basically on business objectives and commercial objectives. Um, so then how you get there in the actual new definition obviously differs. Um, but it could be things like marketing's role needs to be supporting the entire customer journey. So from pipe to retention, where potentially the old role of marketing was more focused on that lead gen piece. Um, for, for another customer, it might be actually that the new role of marketing is more focused on long term growth and a key component of that being through brand. Um, or it could just be a bit more kind of broad in terms of actually the new role of marketing being to be a strategic growth driver and to kind of add that value to the business which again has lots of different facets for how you get there. Um, so really kind of taking a business from A to B and making sure that the role of marketing is fit uh, for purpose to make sure that it's delivering what the business needs. In terms of um, the, the benefits of alignment, I guess there's multi-layers to so starting at a business level. Um, the key benefits are really accelerating growth, so both faster revenue growth, but also higher profitability at a slightly lower level, kind of a functional, cross-functional level. Um, it will improve the ability of teams to deliver, both for commercially and also for customers. And then at a slightly lower level, kind of more of a team level, um, so potentially a marketing level, it ultimately um, results in empowered teams. So I mentioned it earlier, but where there's clarity on goals and roles, people know where they're meant to be performing, they know their KPIs, they can perform better in terms of efficiency and effectiveness. And obviously those three layers interact um, and you get kind of a, a bigger growth as you go up as well. Oh, That's nice. <clears throat> Thanks, Danny. Uh, just quick summary there. Um, so Kristin, uh, from your point of view. Um, yeah, so we're gonna hear, um, I, I love the fact that there's gonna be some repetition of, of the conversation here. Um, ideal state, benefits of alignment, operationally speaking, your marketing organization's people will make or break you, regardless of planning, process, or platforms. That's that's a, a definitely a, a huge component here. And I always encourage um, my customers to ensure that they have a strong strategy for enabling their people and then focus on process effectiveness and platform RI as well. We're going to hit those three, people enablement, benefits, um, people enablement, process effectiveness, and platform ROI. So just real quick, in terms of people enablement, um, again, there's going to be some repetition here. Number one, clear goals and responsibilities within your marketing organization is critical. Um, blurred lines lead to blurred activities, which lead to blurred results, ultimately impacting not just your teams and your culture, but your customers as well, which obviously none of us want that. Um, in the review of those roles and responsibilities, I also recommend um, looking into your onboarding processes and the training and development programs to ensure they're aligned because that's all feeding into what's going on with your process and your platforms. Um, one more tip here, um, back to specifically to people. Um, it's really worth the time to check um, if you're doing a, an employee in PS or SAT surveys, the insights from those um, tools can really help to drive positive change from the inside out. Um, I have a, a an example of that with another client, but um, maybe that's for another time. Um, the benefits here, obviously, again, reiterating what Danny said, higher satisfaction, lower um, turnover allows marketing to really focus more on marketing and proving its value to the organization. Um, just real briefly on process effectiveness. Um, it seems like process effectiveness tends to be thought of as kind of the ugly duckling within marketing, marketing operations, but um, it can be a relatively low cost, quick win in terms of proving value and driving adoption um, for further improvements. So um, it's really critical to determine how you're going to measure success with process effectiveness. Um, for example, it's not enough to say like we increased our lead response and check that box. 
um, you should get questions like, well, why and how much and um, to what end? So for marketing um, to really gain um, a much better, well, increased credibility and, and um, to, to drive further adoption here, the story might go something like our lead response time was low below industry averages. It was impacted largely, um, we determined by outdated criteria, that misalignment factor. So we made it a priority this quarter to improve it. We did so by 70%. It's now considerably above industry average. We also then increased our pipeline by 30% in that same time period. And um, you know that's just a much stronger story um, to present to the business and then to continue to, like I said, drive adoption for further improvements. Platform ROI. So ideally, um, MarTech governance is in play here. Uh, it's crucial, in my opinion. If you don't have MarTech governance, you need it. <clears throat> and if you have it now, you likely need to improve it. Um, the MarTech space, as we all know, is simply just moving way too fast for that old kind of set it and forget it mindset um, to be in play here. So the benefits, I mean, it's it's pretty obvious. Um, you're not going to, you're not only able to measure um, the adoption of the platform, but its performance and value to the organization. Um, there's kind of like two or three key points here. Um, I like to start with having a clearly defined and documented approach to identifying and selecting the right tech for your business. Going back to use cases there, um, definitely. And then looking at the implementation and launch planning of that tech um, to get to the ROI, as well as being able to then um, measure results and optimize performance. And then all kind of circles back to, again, going back to that onboarding and adoption and satisfaction within your internal teams um, to really have a strong case for um, continued alignment. That's it. That's great. Thanks, Kristen. Um, so we've, there's some clear benefits across the business that we can see coming out of there. So how can a company start towards improving alignment through their marketing strategy and operations? Uh, Danny, as, as ever. To nice. I, also, I also just want to say if anyone had any questions about anything that we've covered so far or are about to cover please do pop them in the chat um just so we try and get to them if we can at the end um in terms of yeah how to improve alignment through marketing strategy there's three key areas so starting with long-term strategies so making sure that marketing has a long-term strategy in place that's aligned to the business objectives um long term in terms of 12 to 24 months uh, ideally, it would be agreed by all key stakeholders so that everyone is on board with the role of marketing and marketing con marketing's contribution to those objectives, the business objectives, as well as them being kind of disseminated and com communicated to all functions to, again, make sure that the value in the role of marketing is understood um, and that actually the role of marketing is then uh, kind of cross alignment as well. So there's the alignment with other functions uh, within the business. In terms of um, understanding as well, making sure that all of the functions and key stakeholders understand what's in that strategy. And actually then there is the flexibility to, to change it um, as needed. So if there's market, customer, competitor kind of things that crop up in those 12, 24 months, there's still the flexibility in the strategy to, to adapt, but actually that the overall course stays the same. So the strategy is still making sure that marketing is delivering what it needs to, to hit those overall business objectives. But there is still that almost the flex in there as needed. Second on a value point, um, to make sure that marketing strategy is creating value both for customers, but also for the business. So obviously just talked around the business objectives, but from a custom point of view, it might be things like enhancing the buyer journey or looking at the web experience from a more kind of business side of view. It may be looking at close rates or retention in partnership with sales or actually marketing, delivering customer and market insight in, in partnership with sales, but also with product. And there's that feedback loop as well. And then from a third point of view, um, the third thing, the capacity and capability, making sure that the marketing team itself has the right people in place to be able to deliver on that strategy once it's defined. And the right team in terms of yeah, the capability and capacity, there's the right role of marketing to actually make sure that marketing can deliver the impact that it needs. Um, Phil obviously referenced the stat about CMOs feeling that they can't deliver the impact that they they want to. Um, so the role of marketing is key there, as is the structure, making sure that the right structure is in place, that people can thrive in their roles um, and that they have clarity and accountability on their roles as well. And then the final point, just before I hand over to Kristen, is again, making sure that training's in place um, to empower people in those roles. So structurally, they're fine. 
the role of marketing is defined and actually they're then able to thrive in their in their role in terms of the capability that they've got as well thanks Danny uh, and Kristin uh, operationally how can we start our journey towards Nirvana yeah so um I love this question I uh, I decided to put it kind of into the context of building a business case for change um because the goal is to change the direction of your marketing organization from this misaligned state to this ideally fully aligned state. And this requires more, um, really more than um, enabling people or improving your process and or you know measuring your platform ROI. It's the kind of change that really requires that we improve the maturity of the marketing organization as well. So we don't find ourselves falling back into old ways, but we continue to um, improve and move forward. Um, you know, again, I go back to being able to, how do we measure something like that using as a quantifiable approach as possible, um, designed to, to really prove the value as effectively as possible. So I think I, ha I have three, I finally narrowed it down to about three tips. <laughs> um, I'm going to use the B word here, benchmark. Um, benchmark where you are now to better understand um, what it's going to take to get you to where you need to be, to get aligned. Um, it's hard work. Building a business case for change really requires that you get your hands dirty, so to speak. And that's really across the board. We're looking at, you know, people, process, um, the platforms, the tech, as we've talked about, data, sales and marketing alignment, um, results measurement, and, you know, potentially um, cross-functionally um, um, across the business and other areas as well. Um, two, prioritization. So based off this benchmarking exercise, um, which uh, how does that get then aligned and prioritized to what your marketing priorities are and then what um, which should also already be aligned to the business priorities I mean that's again a different conversation so let's just assume that those are all aligned um, from the top down your organization then needs to agree to those priorities because those are feeding what you're doing in terms of your planning and those related projects so we don't want to get into this um, conversation about alignment just for the sake of alignment and sometimes it can it can seem that way we really want to make sure we keep it focused on you know business priorities marketing priorities aligned to um, maturing your marketing organization um, so what happened need, what needs to happen first what needs to happen second third concurrently versus consecutively um, you know to make that happen and then finally um, change management so uh you know, let's talk about it a bit here. Just fully funded initiatives um, live and die based on the quality of the change management from planning and execution to launch and support of these initiatives. So um, take a look within your organization. Who's responsible for change management in your marketing organization? Is it addressed, um, for example, in the business case for every new uh, MarTech request submitted? Um, how is it communicated within your organization? Strong change management is just simply key to um, really getting your your marketing organization aligned uh, and getting it mature to the point where um, you're able to prove the value. Thanks, Kristen. Well, we're, <clears throat> we're getting tight on time, but I, I do want to ask you both. For, I, I always love a real world example. Uh, just from the time I was even coding and could see all these constructs and had no idea why I was looking at them. So anything you can do to bring this into kind of bring it to life for us. Um, what have we got? You want me to go first again? I'll, I'll take the lead. Um, As ever. <laughs> um, so I can talk through an example a customer. So Casium Group, they're a healthcare solutions partner. So they are the largest um, UK solutions partner offering staffing and managed services to health and social care systems. Um, to follow the three steps of kind of marketing strategy that I ran through, we basically help them to transform their marketing organization. That was across people, process, and platforms. Um, first, in terms of a long-term strategy piece, we designed the strategy that was aligned to their PE-led business goals. So they had quite high um, accelerated growth targets based on being kind of a PE-led. Um, so making sure that the marketing team had the strategy in place to support those overarching business goals um, and that their value was kind of tracked to that as well. In terms of the second point around creating value for both customers and the business, um, a key measure of success for the program was actually improving the end-to-end -end candidate experience because they offer staffing solutions to things like health trusts. Um, candidates are actually a key 
uh, part of their customer base. So actually the success of the transformation of marketing overall was increased recruitment of candidates and the advocacy within that group as well. Um, so making sure that actually the value that marketing was created was centered around that customer value that they were generating as well. And then finally, in terms of the third piece, making sure that the team, uh, the right people in place have the capacity and the capability. Um, we actually transformed the role of marketing. So it had a new vision, a new structure and new roles within that. So again, people were clear on their uh, responsibilities, their roles, their KPIs as a marketing team. So that can then impact the wider business as well. So everything kind of scales out from those three steps. Great, thanks. And Kristen? Um, yeah, I love getting into the data here. So just um, real quick, my example of alignment for the win is Naylor Association Solutions. Naylor works with trade and professional associations across the nation, helping them maximize their membership engagement and generate more net revenue. So we um, specifically help them transfer their renewals program for this large subscription base across people, process, platforms. Um, and I just wanted to highlight some of the results here real quick. Um, so prior to transforming the renewal program, 95% of their renewals were processed in an average of 87 days. So after the launch of the new program, um, Naylor was capturing 95% of the renewal revenue in an average of 24 days. So 63 days faster. Um, I already did the math, <laughs> um, but they could then recognize those revenues much faster, um, which made their finance people very happy. And actually to that, their CFO recognized the efficiency and the increased revenues because marketing was doing a very good job at communicating this. Um, so, you know, not a surprise, the CFO um, then asked marketing to help roll out the, the solution across the entire organization. Um, take a quick look on the sales side. On average, it was taking their reps about three calls to renew a client after the new program launched. Um, they renewed almost 600 clients without a single phone call. It was DIY. Um, this saved the reps about 1,800 phone calls, make sales happy, make everyone happy. Um, one of the initial um, sales folks who was really hesitant about the new program, she was able to increase her new sales year to date over the previous year by 16%. Um, she attributed it to the time saved, not having to be on the phone. Um, she also made President's Club, so she was excited about um, the whole thing, became a huge advocate for the program. That's great. Thanks, Kristen. Well, we are actually, we're about 30 seconds from the end, so I think <laughs> we're going to have to skip the questions for today, but we will come back on any questions that have come in uh, via email. Uh, but just to leave you the, um, we will send emails out following this, uh, so you've got links to the full guide that we've created around this and also to our P assessment, which uh, allows you to assess how your people are coping across the people planning processes and the platforms. So, yeah, thanks very much for joining us. And uh, do join us next time when we'll have a look at some other bits and pieces around this topic and dive further into the different elements. And uh, yeah, looking forward to that next session. Thanks yeah. to our panelists and goodbye to all. Thanks. Thanks, yeah. Phil. Thanks, Phil. Thank you.